Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Educate. Today we're going to be talking about the responding of humans to the environment. So um, we have to really analyze the topic so that we understand it, especially for those people who would like to do medicine as they are yeah, as a degree or whatever. Yeah, so something like that. If you want to do health sciences, I think this information is very important. So let us talk about this topic. What is the responding to the environment of humans? This is of humans. So uh, this topic is all about how humans respond to their external environment. So not talking about external environment, we're just talking about what's happening around you. So that's your environment. So how does a human respond to that, especially during hot days? You sweat, for example. You see, during hot days, your body starts sweating. So it means that's your response to the sweat, to, to this hotness, to the heat. So, yeah. So actually, this topic, topic is all about how humans respond to a certain change in the environment. So that external environment or anything that happens in the outer environment is called a stimulus in life sciences terms. So when it comes to life sciences, we won't use the word change in environment or something like external environment will use the word stimulus so the stimulus it's something that is happening around you like for example if there is heat around you that's a stimulus so uh, in plural we call it stimuli so it means when there are many stimuluses we call them stimuli so example examples of stimuli is for let's say they have a heat or cold or danger or anything that is happening around you around you yeah around your body or something like that so anything that's happening around you is called a stimulus so examples of those stimuli are heat cold or anything so the body's response to such is controlled by the human nervous system which is what we're going to be learning about in this episode so now the human nervous system is a system that detects first it detects first it detects the changes in the outer environment then it causes the body to respond in some way for example i've said that when it is very hot your body will start to sweat so it is the nervous system that detect that there is some heat out there then it will do what it will react your body will react by sweating so it causes the body to respond in some way based on whatever stimuli you are given or whatever stimulus is happening in the environment so it is classified into main two two main types which is the central nervous system as well as the peripheral nervous system so this is just a diagram that shows the classification and divisions of the nervous system so the nervous system is divided into two main types which is the central nervous system as well as the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system uh, is is consisting of the brain and the spinal cord we are still going to detect to discuss more of it whereas the peripheral nervous system is divided into an autonomic nervous system as well as a somatic nervous system that autonomic nervous system is further divided again into two branches which is called the sympathetic branch as well as the parasympathetic branch we are going to break down each and of every one of those divisions and see what they do to the human body so now let's talk of the central and peripheral nervous system so this is a human body diagram which is just indicating the locations of yeah something like that so here in this case the central nervous system may very well say that it consists of the brain and the spinal cord the brain is just this main part that is in your head that is this part so the brain and the spinal cord this spinal cord this is a spinal cord just this part just that goes down at your back this is called a spinal cord it is inside that bone spine so it is a spinal cord it is a cord that is inside that those bones at your back so um the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord so it is sort of like the main part that controls the body's response to the environment because you cannot live without your brain your brain is doing everything in your body whereas the peripheral nervous system it is now talking about all these we usually call these cranial nerves we usually call these cranial nerves so all these branches these blue things you're seeing all around here those spinal and cranial nerves 
those are part of the peripheral nervous system so that peripheral nervous system it is just this part of the green part as well as the cranial nerves here yeah well these are actually spinal nerves these ones are actually the spinal nerves so the peripheral nervous system is the blue part yeah this blue part uh, where is the um, the, 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 the central nervous system it is this brain and spinal cord so this is usually abbreviated as CNS so when you see CNS don't be confused this is PNS so let us now go to the peripheral nervous system or the PNS so the this part of the nervous system is further divided into the autonomic as well as the somatic nervous system as we have discussed here it is the autonomic here as well as the somatic nervous system so now uh, the autonomic nervous system is the one that you talk about mostly so the autonomic system is an involuntary system so when you say that the nervous system is involuntary it means that it does not depend on your choice for the body to respond with something for example um heartbeat for example breathing for example sneezing you do not choose when to breathe you do not choose when to sneeze and you do not even choose how fast your heart must beat so it is an code and involuntary action so those involuntary body responses are carried out by the autonomic nervous system so this autonomic nervous system is divided into a sympathetic as well as a parasympathetic branch so now the sympathetic branch is called the stimulator actually it is the one that stimulates an involuntary response when you say that it is stimulating for example i say that the involuntary actions are for example heartbeat how fast your heart beats you cannot control it it is involuntary how how fast you breathe you cannot control it it is involuntary your sneezing you cannot control it because it is something that happens your body does it so it is done by this system the autonomic nervous system so the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system it is the one that stimulates the action it is the one that causes the breathing the heartbeat to increase it is the one that stimulates that involuntary response of the body for example here i've said that um it increases the heartbeat for example when you are running when you are running or maybe you're jogging or taking a jog your heartbeat will increase or your heart will beat faster what part of the autonomic nervous system it is causing that is the sympathetic branch so the sympathetic it is just associated with the stimulation of the heartbeat or maybe increasing something just stimulating some involuntary response remember an involuntary response is something that you do not choose it happens on its own the other thing is that is that it requires a lot of energy for you to when you are running there you have got a lot of energy hence the sympathetic branch will stimulate your heart to beat faster then you have got a parasympathetic branch this is the second part the parasympathetic branch does the opposite of the sympathetic branch so when you say that it is doing the opposite for example i've said increasing a heartbeat here in this case the parasympathetic branch will reduce the heartbeat so um for example when you are running you are running the sympathetic branch is at work by making the heart beat faster but then when you go and rest what will happen the parasympathetic branch will reduce your heartbeat so it will not need too much energy in comparison to the sympathetic branch so they usually use this word double innovation so double innovation is the word that is usually used for these two when you say that they are doing double innovation it means that some some one of them is increasing is increasing some action uh, then the other one is decreasing some involuntary action so just like here the sympathetic is increasing that bit whereas the parasympathetic is decreasing it so that is double innovation meaning that they are acting oppositely to each other but then on the same system so now let us continue now to the brain so the brain um is a very very vital uh, it's a very very vital part of the body because it controls all functioning of the body everything that happens to your body it is due to your brain so it is it has to be in some way protected so the brain is protected in three ways so you will study three ways of on how the brain is protected you it is not really explained but then i'll try my best to give explanations so the three ways in which the brain is protected first it is inside a 
bony cranium. So the cranium is your skull. So your skull is your cranium, but then we use the word cranium and not skull because, uh, you know, we are doing licenses. So here we use the word cranium. So that cranium it is bony. It just means that it, it is a bone. It is made of bones or something like that. So those bones protect the brain. So that is the first way the brain is protected. And the second way, it is surrounded by three membranes. And those membranes are called meninges. So meninges also, there are other cells called meninges. I don't think you need to know their types uh, or maybe their names. But then just know that there are meninges that protect the brain. Then the last uh, thing which we're going to talk about, it is cushioned by a fluid called the cerebrospinal fluid. So this cerebrospinal fluid, it takes part in also uh, protecting the brain in a way. So this is the ways, the three ways in which the brain is protected. So now let us look at the structure of the brain. How does the brain of a human being look? So this is how the brain of a human being looks. Um, well, this is the structure of it. It is, it is consisting of these labels which I've just mentioned here. We're looking at the first label here. We've got the cerebrum. The cerebrum here, it is the largest part of it, as, as I've said here. It is the largest part of the brain and it is divided into the left and the right hemisphere. So this is the cerebrum. This white part, it is the main part of the brain, the largest part called the cerebrum. Then the second largest part is the cerebellum. It is this part, cerebellum. Don't confuse the names. It is this reddish part here. And then we have got other parts such as the medulla oblongata. So those three which I have just written these short descriptions of here, they are the most important ones which you need to know. So now let us continue to the functions of those parts of the brain. So the first part of the brain, which is the cerebrum, has got three main functions and you need to know each one of them. So the cerebrum, first it controls voluntary functions or voluntary actions. So when you are saying that an action is voluntary, it just means that you choose to do it, right? So we, remember we said involuntary, it's something that happens on its own. So when we say that voluntary, it means you choose to do it. So when you are speaking as I am, or when you are writing as I am writing here, it is the cerebrum that is performing this function and then the second part of the cerebrum it receives and interprets sensations from sense organs so your brain it is the one that senses actually when you are hearing someone talking it is your brain that hears it not your ears when you are seeing someone it is not your eyes that are seeing someone it is your brain that are seeing some that, that is seeing someone when you are tasting something, your brain is the one that recognizes the test and not your mouth. So the, 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 the brain is the one that receives those senses or those sensations, we we'll call them sensations, from sense organs such as hearing, the taste, the smell. When you smell something, it is not the nose that is smelling, but then it is the cerebrum that is perceiving that smell. So the third function of the cerebrum, it controls higher thought processes. When you are thinking about something, it is your cerebrum that is thinking. So the cerebrum is sort of like the brain, the main part of the brain. So such as memory, when you are memorizing something, when you remember someone, whenever you put something into your mind or to your brain, it is the cerebrum that actually stores it. So the cerebrum's functions are three here. Then the second part, which is the cerebellum, has got also three functions. The first one it is to coordinate voluntary actions. So do you notice that we've got voluntary actions even in the cerebrum? But then the difference here is that the cerebrum controls the part, the, the, uh, the voluntary actions, whereas the cerebellum coordinates the, uh, the voluntary actions. So when we are just saying it controls, it means it is the one that is giving an instruction for example when i am writing here it is my cerebrum cerebrum that is giving the instruction but then coordination it means who is carrying out the instruction so in this case the cerebellum is the one carrying out the action uh, causing my hand to be able to write here something like that and then the second function it maintains balance and posture so for you to balance for your muscles to balance for you to stand straight for you to to sit, to walk, 
everything it is the cerebellum as well and then it also maintains muscle tone remember that your body is controlled by your muscles so for your muscle so for for your muscle coordination or for your muscles to be controlled it is due to the cerebellum then the third part which is important is the medulla oblongata the medulla oblongata it is this part which i've just drawn here it is just this lower part of the brain this lower part of the brain is very important because it controls breathing and heartbeat so those are vital processes so when you are talking about breathing for example when you need to breathe or maybe your heart is beating it is all because of the medulla oblongata so it is the one that is doing the function of the autonomic nervous system it is the is the medulla oblongata and the other function it transmits impulses from the spinal cord into the brain we are still going to get into the topic of impulses but then just take this and note it down as a function then the fourth part which is the hypothalamus just this region here which is painted in purple the hypothalamus is a control center for hunger for thirst for sleep and temperature sometimes even emotions so when you're feeling hungry or maybe when you're feeling sleepy it is because it is your hypothalamus detecting that you are sleepy and then it reports to you so those are the functions of the main parts of the brain so um i may have skipped some of them such as the corpus callosum here because they are minor but then the corpus callosum just divides or separates the left hand side of the brain and the right hand side of the brain so it separates the left and right hemisphere of the cerebrum so here these are just the main parts and this is just an introduction to the responding to the environment don't forget to watch our next video where we're going to be talking about the spinal cord and introduce the concept of neurons don't forget to subscribe tell your friends to stay tuned